In this video we're going to explore some of the University of Arizona's national championship teams and in particular we will do this by analyzing and testing the Pythagorean theorem. So the objective of the Pythagorean theorem as you may recall from Mathletics chapter 1 is to see what the relationship is between uh, the runs scored, runs allowed, and predictive winning percentage for that season. So we're going to explore whether the Pythagorean theorem works for college baseball as well because so far we've only studied it for professional baseball. We're going to do this by using a one-way table in Excel to see how changing one input of a particular parameter, in this case it's going to be the exponent in the Pythagorean theorem, how changing that affects multiple outputs. And an intermediate step to get there is going to require us to calculate predicted winning percentage and compare that to the actual winning percentage. And finally, we are going to uh, calculate the scoring ratio for a team, then the absolute error of the Pythagorean theorem, and finally the mean standard deviation to test whether the Pythagorean theorem is actually an accurate predictor of a team's wins over a season. Now you've read about these formulas, but let me go through them uh, one by one. The formula at the top is the classic Pythagorean theorem which was developed by Bill James. That is run scored squared divided by run scored squared plus runs allowed squared. This gives you an estimate of the percentage of games won in a season for a baseball team. The next formula is just the ratio of runs scored by runs allowed and this is known as the scoring ratio. We're going to calculate this using Microsoft Excel for college baseball. The next formula is a variation of the very top one, the Pythagorean theorem, written in a different way. So runs scored squared divided by runs allowed squared plus one is another way to write the Pythagorean theorem. So that formula is called the predictive winning percentage because it's the same exact output as the, the first formula shown on this slide. The last formula on the bottom is very simply just cal calculating the actual winning percentage of a team. So wins divided by wins plus losses or another way to say that is wins divided by the total number of games. Now these are some necessary terms in order to calculate the winning percentage I'm sorry, the accuracy of the Pythagorean theorem formula. So first we're going to look at the absolute error. And the absolute error is just the absolute value of the difference between the actual winning percentage and the predictive winning percentage. So the actual winning percentage is just the calculation of how that team did in this season, whereas the predictive winning percentage is what comes out of the Pythagorean theorem equation. Then what we're going to do is, as we calculate the absolute error for multiple teams in a season, in, a con in one conference, we're going to take the average of all of those errors, and that's going to be called the mean absolute deviation, also known as MAD. The mean absolute deviation is going to be our score to determine whether the exponent in the Pythagorean theorem formula is the best one, or the optimal one. And we're going to do this by looking at a particular data set from 2012 of the Pacific 12 Conference which is actually the year that the Arizona Wildcats won the national championship. All the data for that particular season are available here on the Pac-12 website. So by clicking on 2012, the year we are interested in, we can see all the statistics for all the teams, in fact all the game results for the entire season for all 12 teams including the College World Series. So if we look at Arizona for instance we can see all of their results plus attendance, the duration of the game, all the data are available here. 
we're going to focus on the conference team statistics and in particular we're going to uh, analyze the 12 teams in the conference and see if the Pythagorean theorem applies to Pac-12 baseball in the same way it applies to Major League Baseball. So one of the uh, focal points is going to be this column R which is the number of runs that each team scored. Now what, what I've already done is entered the team's records, wins and losses, as well as the number of runs scored and runs allowed for the 2012 season. Now just to emphasize these games, ones, ones uh, and losses are for the entire season, not just conference play. So these include uh, preseason and postseason as well. So the first calculation we're going to do is the scoring ratio, which is the number of runs scored. So I'm going to say equals number of runs scored divided by number of runs allowed. So this gives me an idea, in ca the case of UCLA, for instance, is they scored many more runs than they allowed. Okay, I'm going to uh, put my mouse on the bottom right side of that cell, and when I double click on it, it automatically populates the same equation for all the cells below. Except here, it, it uh, went one extra row, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, so this gives us the idea of the scoring ratio. Now the next step is to calculate the predicted winning percentage and this is where we're going to implement the Pythagorean theorem. Now to review, the predictive winning percentage is going to be runs scored squared divided by runs allowed squared plus one. But the question we're trying to figure out is whether the squared in the exponent is the best one for baseball. So in Microsoft Excel what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cell here called exponent. To begin with I'm going to enter 2 as the exponent because that's what the Pythagorean theorem says in Major League Baseball. So we're going to use this starting number to calculate the predictive winning percentage. So predictive winning percentage is going to be the scoring ratio squared divided by scoring ratio squared plus 1. So here we go. Let's say equals the scoring ratio to the power, and that's shift 6, squared, okay, divided by, I'm going to put parentheses here, the scoring ratio squared plus 1. Okay, so that gives us a predicted winning percentage of 738. Now one of the things that Excel, you have to be careful with Excel, is whenever you make reference to a cell, you need to make sure that you always make reference to that same cell when you copy a formula down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little dollar sign between H and 2 and that what that tells Excel is always refer to cell H2 without doing those dollar signs anytime we copy this formula down it's going to continue to to refer to cells that are below H2 so H3 H4 H5 etc so this is going to help us lock in that this formula is always going to refer to this cell. Okay, so by doing that, you'll see that it did not change the result. All it did is it now knows H2 is always going to be fixed. So I put my uh, cursor on the bottom right and I double click on the cells and you'll see that it calculates all the predictive, predicted winning percentages. I'm going to remove the last cell because it's not relevant. Okay, so now the key is let's calculate the actual winning percentage. So again that's going to be 
the number of wins divided by total games. Okay, so it's going to be equal this cell divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses here, this cell plus losses. Okay, and you see there's this formula B5 divided by B5 plus C5. We don't need to use the dollar sign symbol because as we copy this this formula down we wanted to use the corresponding uh, rows uh, for that each team. So again I can either uh, double click on the bottom right of this uh, cell or I can just single click and drag down and I would get the same effect of copying that formula down. So you'll see now that there is a predicted winning percentage which is the Pythagorean theorem of using the squared and then there's an actual winning percentage. Now the absolute error is going to be the difference between the two but it's going to be the um, absolute value. Okay. So to review the absolute error is the absolute value that's what these vertical lines mean the absolute value of the difference between the actual winning percentage and the predicted winning percentage so basically we're going to take the difference between predicted and actual but we want the absolute value so the formula in Excel is ABS parentheses this cell minus this cell, close parentheses. You'll see that the error is quite small and the reason we want absolute value is because in some cases the difference is going to be positive, in other cases is the difference is going to be negative. And so by by looking at positive numbers and negative numbers they may actually cancel each other out so we just want the absolute error, the absolute value of that error. So again I don't need any uh, dollar signs because I do want this formula to as I copy it down I wanted to use these numbers here okay so I'm gonna double click on this cell and you'll see that uh, the absolute errors get calculated here so what the absolute error tells you is if it's very small it means that the Pythagorean formula did a very nice job of predicting this is column G predicting the actual winning percentage of the team. So when this difference is small it means it did a nice job. For instance uh, for Cal the predicted was 0.546 and the actual was 0.537 so the absolute error is very small 0 0.009. Actually same case for Arizona. The error is very very small. 0 0.009. Actually, here's the smallest. For Stanford, it was 0 0.005. So it did a very, very good job of calculating that. For other teams, it did not do a very good job. For instance, Arizona State, the absolute error was very big, meaning that their predicted was much higher or, or, or was just much different than the actual winning percentage. Okay, now we're going to go and calculate the mean absolute deviation. And to review, all this formula is is the average of all the absolute errors. Okay, the absolute errors are now uh, all treated as um, absolute values. So we're, it's not like we're averaging positive numbers and negative numbers to each other. We're just averaging absolute values. Okay, and the formula then for average is just typing the word average. And I'm going to highlight I'm going to highlight all of the uh, cells above it and hit enter. Okay, so the mean absolute deviation for the Pythagorean formula that uses an exponent of 2 is 0 0.029. Now it's difficult to tell whether that's any good, whether we can get a more accurate prediction, whether there's a more accurate version of the Pythagorean uh, theorem formula. It's hard to know just having one value. 
and only testing one exponent. So the next step, and this is where it may go beyond what you've seen in Excel, the next step is to create a one-way table that allows us to test whether the squared for the exponent is the best one to get. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of exponents and this is arbitrary but I'm going to uh, have them range from 1 all the way let's say to 5. By copying these two rows Excel already learns the pattern that I'm increasing by a tenth so I'm going to drag this down all the way to 5 just to test uh, the ranges that are possible for the um, Pythagorean theorem. Actually I could keep going beyond 5 but I know that the, that the lowest value is somewhere between 1 and 5. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, this MAD formula into this cell. So I'm going to say L2 is going to equal this formula here. Surprisingly, though, neither UCLA nor Arizona won the Pac-12 conference regular season. It was actually Stanford who won that year. Uh, I believe they went undefeated in conference play. So 18 of these wins were actual uh, conference wins, and all of those losses were outside of the conference. The other thing uh, to notice is, though, even though these are top teams here, the Pythagorean model also is a good predictor of how these teams are going to do in the uh, in the postseason. So it turns out uh, UCLA went pretty far in the College World Series, and Arizona actually ended up winning the College World Series that year. So you'll see the difference between runs scored and, and runs allowed is, is razor thin. So this doesn't explain or predict which team is going to come out on top. It only tells you roughly uh, which teams are going to do well but the actual results of the game are going to come down to execution and a little bit of luck. So I hope that this particular exercise gave you an idea of how the Pythagorean theorem can be tested for college baseball. Your challenge next is going to be to test whether the Pythagorean theorem and in particular which value for the exponent works the best for college football and college basketball.